Hey everyone, it's Joe, it is AES, and uh, Dimitri here. And Dimitri wrote me, was it last week, Dimitri, I think? You you had found uh, yeah, us yeah. a couple really interesting files on working with DLL calls and structures and stuff, way beyond my understanding of stuff. But um, and I'm laughing because we're like, hey, let's do it Sunday. And now after you guys were talking, I'm so glad I, like, if if Isaias wasn't here, I would have been like, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, why don't you go ahead and lead us off here of, of first off, why should someone watch this right now, right? To help us understand that. Yeah. If you want to learn a little, you're, you're starting to code and AutoHotKey is actually a really easy language, by my opinion. It's one of the simplest that I encounter. And uh, if you, you start coding and you, you find interesting scripts on the forum and you try, oh, that's advanced, they can do it. And I also start to modify some of that code. And there I encounter a, a lot of times the DLL calls, but I'm actually pretty lost in them. I don't know how they figure out how you set them up and you need to use a lot of complicated uh, functions that are hard to understand, like, uh, creating a buffer and uh, setting bytes in a certain buffer. And I always find it really difficult to figure out how they set it up. But now I found two scripts that make it actually a little bit more easier to do it. And yeah, maybe it can help a lot of users yeah. to, to make that jump to the, the DLL functions. Let me back up just a little bit, a tiny bit, just for a minute and say, like you said, auto hockey, the language itself is is really, it's super easy to learn, right? Um, version one more than version two, but it's still, both are still very simple. And they're basically wrapping Windows API calls for the most part, right? Yes. Which does, and that actually is sending send and post messages and other things as well. But some there's a lot of other functionality built into windows that you can have access to right two main ones are dll calls and like a com object both of those things don't well especially the dll calls you're actually when you're using a dll call you're programming in the other language like c sharp or what do you know what do you guys know which <laughs> yeah so <laughs> whatever that particular library was written in so, that's right which actually thanks for bringing that up Isaiah. a dll is a dynamic link library, if I remember that right, right? It's a it's yes. a group of functions that just are sitting there in your computer going, hey, use me, use me. You know, like they're <laughs> available for you to use if you know how to connect to it and use. And right. that gets back to the thing that Dimitri had found and saying like, this actually helps you bridge that gap of going, I want to use that DLL, but I don't want to try to figure out some of the stuff they're going to talk about and I'm going to tune out because I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> no, and basically, let me, before you turn out, let me uh, latch on a little bit on yeah. the conversation about why we should use it. So uh, Auto Hotkey, again, as he mentioned, it is simple, right? But it is extremely powerful because you can write to the registry. You can use uh, uh, very interesting functions that belong to Windows in a very simple way, right? It is simple, yet it allows you to do a lot of automating stuff really quickly. Like, for example, when you create a hotkey, that is actually hiding all the code that you need to do to just create a hotkey on C++, right? For you, just you just put a letter to columns and you're done, right? But that actually hides a lot of work that must be done. But there's a lot of features that a hotkey does not have a simple way to write it that you can still access. You have to actually understand the functions. And there's this whole thing like the MSDN library that probably by now you have heard it at least once. <laughs> and that MSDN library contains all the API functions that you could use. And you would be surprised about the things that you can find in there. Anything that you think about Windows, yes, you can do it. There's a function for that. But to access it, think about the DLL call as a door. It allows you to access that function that is in a dynamic link library, as you just mentioned. Um, the only little detail about it is that in a hotkey, when you use a function, you just pass the arguments one by one, right? In other languages, that's not how it works. Whenever you use a variable, 
you have to tell what type of variable that is. If it is an integer, if it is a string and so on, you can but, never use, you, you, you have to define it somewhere what it is, right? When you're doing a DLL call, that's where it gets tricky. Every parameter that you pass, you have to tell the DLL call, okay, this one is a string, but this one is an integer, and this one is, uh, I don't know, a pointer. And it becomes really tricky to figure those out, which is what Dimitri is going to show now, and how the tool really helps on that particular part. Cool. Let's go for it. I'll start uh, sharing my screen. I think it's easiest to first start with the definition of the DLL call because probably a lot of users uh, are not familiar with it. Um, if I understand correctly, the, the first parameter is actually one very important one. That's just a, the function that you want to access. It's most of the time just a string. Always. And then you define the type of the first arguments and then the value of the first arguments. And then it goes on and on. And the last one can be optionally, I think, the type of the return. For the, for the function, yes. Yeah, parameter. That is, and that is, again, it has to do a lot with how the language is defined because there are some languages that are strict, like C++. You have to tell what the function actually returns. So in this case, I have to tell the DLL call, okay, this function is going to return this type. That's what is going on. Well, and, and I know partially that's one of the reasons why those other languages are so much faster because yes. you have defined all these things. It doesn't have to figure it out. Exactly. Right? Hotkey, you know, it's figured it, it, out. So it's and out of hotkey, you put a string or a number in a variable and then out of hotkey does the job for you and figures out, oh, this one is a string or this one is, a, is an integer. And that's what takes a little bit long time, you know, to do. But so, yeah, I, you're I think totally that right. even mm -hmm. out of hotkey, you can also define the parameters to make it faster, not? No. Well, not in the out of hotkey language itself. When you're doing the DLL call, yes, but not like, oh, well, yeah. the only way that you could hack that is using the numput function. And then you put the, your data straight into the memory however you want. And that way you could actually, you know, hack that. But that is really. That's tomorrow's lesson. Yeah, yeah, that, that's something else that doesn't go now. <laughs> that's, uh, that doesn't go in this conversation. Now. <laughs> but basically, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the basic definition of a DLL call. And here, here's the types of arguments. This is, this is the headache that you're going to have whenever you're dealing with DLL calls. This is the part that is really hard. And it's hard for, you know, a lot of people, not just even, you know, it's not just, oh, I've never programmed before. It's people intermediate still, it's work. Well, of course, because, for example, you see the one that says int right there. Mm -hmm. So the one that says int, notice that it actually talks about 32-bit integer and actually 62-bit integer because right above it is because depending on if you're in a 16 uh, in a 32 bit computer or 64 bit computer some of those types actually change the size and just imagine if you're doing a DLL call and you pass the wrong type you're going to have different results and <laughs> it is complex it is a little bit more complex than it looks like but this and actually this is the funny thing this is the easy part this is actually even though it is complex and stuff this is simple yeah. because what happens is that this is simplified and you will notice. So this is very simple to understand. This is simplified, right? But in C++, you will have weird names like that. LP, the word, LP void and stuff like that. And actually in C++, you create your own structures that have their own sizes and they use it in their functions, right? To, for you to figure that one out, <laughs> you would have to look up the definition of that structure and see how it really, what the size is. And that's where it gets really messy, really confusing. 
but let's go ahead and see the tool, how it look, how it does, how it fares. And, and basically, yeah. if you're wondering how, where would I see that information, we could go ahead and open up MSDN to look at the definition of uh, either a structure or a function. There you will see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, I have here a, a simple, one of the most simplest functions, I think, <laughs> just to, yeah. to display a message box. And it's also f quite visual, so we can easily check if it works or not. <laughs> right. And now, actually, notice, the, yeah. notice before you go, so this, what it has is four parameters. You have one, two, three, four parameters. But for each parameter, remember, those are variable names. So that's okay. That doesn't matter. But each of them is given a type. So that first parameter is a handle type. The second parameter is an LP, uh, TSR, and so on. And again, each of them has their own type. This other part here is just whether it's optional or not, so you can ignore that. But that's the difficult part because this tells you the size of that parameter. And for example, uh, LP, C, TSR, right, that one, is a little bit bigger than a handle, for example, just on a, as an example. That's the part that you would have to figure out manually if you wanted to use a DLL call, because then you have to figure out which of the parameters you're going to use in the DLL call, if it is a pointer, if it is an int, if it is a uh, whatever it might be, right? How can I use this if I do not understand the variable types? Well, that's where the tool comes in. Yeah. Also, I say as here, in uh, is meaning that it's a parameter that needs to is an uh, input parameter, I think, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you have to give values. You use yeah. it to give values to the function. Because and there would be another one that it would say out. out. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's right. So I copy just this uh, C++ code. And now I have uh, a, quite an interesting uh, a GUI. And you, you paste here the the DLL function of C++, and he translates that to uh, oh, the hotkey code. Exactly. And this is the part that gets easier for us. It is that this handle now becomes a pointer in DLL call, in, in auto hotkey. And this LPC string becomes string down there. And so basically, it makes the conversion for you. So if you copy this text onto your auto hotkey script, just make the changes and we will see what the end result might be. Okay. This, the tool you're using right now is for version one, auto hotkey version one? Yes, uh, this yes. one is. Yeah, this one is. Right. Um, this one, I think it's maybe zero, zero. zero. Yeah. And this one, I, yeah. Number four might be a good, yeah. It's a good type. Here you find more information. What's so number four. How do we know it? What's what number four is? <laughs> yeah. This one is four. So zero X. So this is the hexadecimal for it or yeah. Uh, just Are you sure? Yet. Isn't this? This one? Yeah, yes, sorry. No. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That is that one. The one that I pointed out is a little bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. And so what would would this one be? Ah, oh, that's the thing. So he, this is hexadecimal. <laughs> so every two <laughs> digits give you a different number. So yeah, I'm I cannot tell you by heart what it is, right? Uh, but we, but we I think could it's the also yes say just use this one. This. Yeah, you can just copy paste it like that. Our hotkey would convert it into it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I would do is add a hex converter. On the, <laughs> on the on, on the thing right here, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. I, I like this that we just use the information of the the page on the documentation. Yeah, you can do that. Yes, yeah. you can just copy paste it there. So we test it out. Well, but and there you go. Okay, but what I what I don't understand, I guess, it, you copied it from the HKDL Terminator. You pasted it into Autohockey, but then you started changing stuff. Right. So basically, remember, in this case, each parameter, um, let me see, hold on. Each parameter here is kind of like, um, oh, I'm sorry. It's a variable, right? So the, the code that is given here is actually a variable. 
So you have to fill those variables with information. And that's what they did on line six through nine. So each variable was given a value. If you want, you can remove those variables and put the information right there. You don't have to actually just, uh, but it is easier. So in case you need to, it, this looks a little bit cleaner in my case, like, because as you're noticing, just to create a message box, you have to pass a few details. For but, us in AutoHotKey, can you write it in AutoHotKey language, how it would look like that same thing? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. So if you if you can go ahead and type it, Dimitri, like just put message box like the, in AutoHotKey. <laughs> if you were to okay. do it. No, 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 not, not like that. No, 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 not that. <laughs> just, just straight up AutoHotKey code. No, not that. Uh, exactly. So the message box command. No, without uh, the DLL call, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, just, just do the message box, put no. the options, would, would, would be like zero four, right? Well, and one thing that, that I want to point out, I just know this from experience with stuff, is there might be functionality in the DLL call that Auto Hockey doesn't have in its line 15 that we're demonstrating here. I'm not saying that's... And, 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 and you see this last parameter here that has a timeout? That is actually something that the auto hotkey language gives you that oh, the original function doesn't. Cool. Yeah, I <laughs> haven't thought about it either. Yeah, it, it, it might happen. Yeah, that we have different interesting things. So you, we're getting the same result as the DLL call because really what is going on is that this thing here is translating it into a DLL call for you without you noticing. It's just making it easier for you. Well, right. but can we go back to the MSDN, wherever you were grabbing it from? Yeah. So where where did you see where it said what text, or what caption, and what you type, like what those go up were, what so those parameters are? It says LP text, that's the long pointer text. That's the text of the message box. How do LP, I know that? That's what I'm saying. No, so yeah, well, because they're going to explain it down here. So sure. whenever you see LP where? text, the message okay, to be no, displayed on the stream, right? So horribly. Yeah, I'm telling you, one of the videos that yeah. we should do is how good the yeah. help file from AutoHotKey is. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you go to any other help file, it is a nightmare. Yeah. But yes, uh, here they describe so, each parameter in details. Yeah. And when you go down to the type here, it gives you additional details about what type uh, accepts. And, and, and this one was nice that they gave you this and gave you the value right there because right. most of them just give you the text and you have to find out the value, what there is somewhere right. else. And yeah, it's so annoying, that. right? Yeah, <laughs> it's really, really annoying. Um, but basically, again, this eliminated the fact that you would have to understand this part, which is what is the most difficult part about it. It just converted it back to you. And then you just set the information that you need for DLL call to work. In this example, it's a very simple example, but there's some DLL calls that are really complex. Well, yeah. And, and I was just thinking it would be kind of cool if we had the top 30 DLLs, you know, into a tool that we didn't even have to go look up, right? And, and it actually told you here's the parameters and all that. Anyway, let's not worry about it. So let's yeah. keep, keep going. That's good. So in general, um, you this is one part. Sometimes, and this is where it gets really annoying, one of those parameters might be a structure. It's not just simply text. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now a structure is also a variable. The only thing is that that variable is a collection of variables. That's what a structure is. Mm -hmm. And those that group of variables in a, is in a specific order in your memory. So whenever you use that structure, the computer knows, well, in this particular location, I'm going to find this thing. In this other, I'm going to find this other. And some functions are expecting parameters that are like that. That's the second nightmare of dealing with DLL calls, right? There's a second tool, which you're going to show now, which allows you to, from MSDN, also, go ahead and grab a structure, and it would actually give you the code that you would do uh, for adding it to um, AutoHotKey. Now, how do you do this in AutoHotKey? 
I assume that probably you haven't used structures that often. But what we do is that we use a specific function that is called numput. This is for people who actually know how to program and they understand how the memory works. They love this function. You will see in, in advanced scripts, you're going to see them using numput all the time. Because what they're going to do is that they're going to put a number in a memory address directly. So in AutoHotKey, whenever you save a variable, AutoHotKey behind the scenes goes and grabs that value and puts it in somewhere in your memory. And keeps track of right, is. right, right. NumPut allows you to do it instead of AutoHotKey. That means that you have manual control of where you're going to put it, which particular location, and the function just simply returns the address of that location. So as I mentioned, uh, a structure is a collection of variable. In this case, this rectangle structure is composed of four variables, left, top, right, and bottom. And they're always in that same order. So the computer knows that if I want to get the right, um, right point of a rectangle, I have to jump two variables before getting into it. Well, That's the idea I behind it. There just for a second, because mm -hmm. if this is where I, I, like I said, I've dabbled some of this with talking with Maestrieth and with Jackie. Um, mm -hmm. Does the the length, the width, however, the, the number of bytes, right, for each of mm -hmm. these things, doesn't it actually keep track of that and that's where it's going to? It, no. No? Okay. No, 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 no. So it knows so it by basically, variables? Okay. Right. It does Maybe it does work it, with structures. Okay. No. So basically what is going to happen is that this guy, rectangle, is going to have an address. Say the address is 200. Yep. Right? Now, as I know how the structure is defined, I know that a long, in this case, has a, a size of four bytes, right? So for me to get the left variable, it is going to be 200, which is the address of rect, plus four, which is the first location. That's what happens, okay? Well, the, the zero is going to be left. The four is going to be top. The eight is going to be right. And the 12 is going to be bottom. But all of them are offsets of the main address. That if the address is 200, you're just going to add one of those. But that's what I said. <laughs> Oh, that, well, that's what I was mentioning. No, yeah. no, but here's the thing. That is not kept track of. Like, there's not that's the only thing. Point. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I thought that, right. that the function was keeping track of every single individual one, but it's not. No, it's just keeping track of one thing, the address, the main well, address. It gives you, right, that was my point. Right, is that I, exactly. That those things matter, and that's how it knows to jump. Exactly, you, yes. You said it's the third variable. I'm like, it doesn't know. Go to the third variable. It, no, it no, no, no. Math to map it out, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And to map it out, that's where data types, why they are so important. Right, sure. Because yeah. a long right. is, is four bytes, right? Yeah. But a D word is 16 bytes, for example. So that's where the type it tells you what is the size that it's going to look for for that particular address in memory. Now, this guy, you just copy pasted that in there. And now, if you go ahead and copy the function down there, what it's going yeah, to do you is first that it. Need to, you oh, you need to compile need to it. Press okay. compile. And then right. you know what that means? Does that mean it goes and. At this point I think in time, it, I'm not it, really sure. Okay. It, it, I think it's looking into other files to figure out the the size of the structure of the of the structure because actually, I yeah here it was quite simple. A long is four bit bytes, mm -hmm. but I think it's not always true because yeah. they. Actually, in the settings, they're referring to large files where, where they are looking in, I think. And you have a lot of options here to, to add or so, remove. Can I interrupt you here for a second, uh, yeah. uh, Dimitri, just because you have this window open here. I see th this one, and I know earlier when we weren't recording, you just you showed like how much from the, is it the SDK? I forget what you had downloaded. Right. At Absolutely. the Windows SDK, right? Yeah. Like, does this structure, does this require those files? 
Yes. No, I don't think so. No, no, no. I, I don't think this structure needs it because uh, these three headers are in all computers. But there are some headers that are not there. And probably that's why he needs this other part. I'm not really sure, though. Okay. I cannot really comment now, on that. What about the Terminator one? That that doesn't need any of this, does it? This one is quite small. Right, this is a when small... When I downloaded this one, he okay. also downloaded a lot of... Uh... Additional files. Yes. Because we didn't mention that earlier. I just want to make sure people understand. Right. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. So, so this one, it says with... It says with, so probably there is a version without it. But it says win version with MSVC. Maybe there's a version without it. But this one is almost three gigs. <laughs> so, but, but I, I think I previously tried to use it without that, uh, that and it files, didn't let you. and then it doesn't work. Well, but maybe you could point it to the files to on your one. Computer. Yeah, exactly. Very likely because you have the options here to select where to point. So basically, probably you can point to your own versions of it. Because you see here that's uh, 2.7 gigabyte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now, if we go back to the, the structure, structure app, can you open it, please? Here's the deal. The reason why it might need to look for it. So this is the definition of it. And down here, think about them as aliases. So in your code, you can say rectangle and name a variable. So rect uh, box, and that's the name of the variable. And you're saying that that variable is of type rect, but you can also call it any of those other ones. And they all mean the same as a rectangle, okay? And that's where it gets tricky because some structures might refer to other structures and the program needs to go figure out what they mean first before it goes ahead and um, compiles it for you. You see what I mean? So here we're just, just using long, right? But there are some structures that in there might contain another structure. So they might refer to a rectangle here. Yeah. So now, even though you gave him this definition, if it sees a, 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 a structure in there, he has to go ahead and look for it and see what the size of that structure is before giving you the correct code down here. So that might be... Uh, a little bit of uh, uh, of why what is going on with the compile button down there, and, and then the other thing I wanted to I I, th I hopefully point out, but you guys might correct me here, is this is for you developing your code. Now, when you put this in auto hotkey, I should be able to give this code to anyway. other people, and they can run it. They don't need all this other crap. No, right? no, no, no. Exactly. This is for for you it's creating your stuff. Calls, I know that. Now, now go ahead and clip on copy. Can it, can you clip on copy? <laughs> Right, so this is the code that you're going to get, right? And uh, for those who do not understand, the first thing is setting the variable size, and it is 16 bytes because you have four variables of four bytes each. So that makes 16 bytes. That's what you're doing. It's and then actually for... preserving a size in your... Exactly, in your memory. In your, right. in your memory, yes. Exactly. And after it's reserved, you can use the numput commands, as I mentioned, to go ahead and put on different and in different offsets, right? Whatever you want to put in there, whatever is it that he wants to put. Oh. But um, but basically, this top left uh, and those kind of things are going to be numbers. For example, the left corner is going to be twenty four. You know, the top corner is going to be thirty. Whatever your code is, that's what you're going to put in your memory. So you can hack it. You can put stuff directly into memory. And later on, to retrieve the information, you might use the numget commands, which actually give you the give you back on that address. Remember, you're using rect here. So you're actually having a, an address to a specific variable, right? That's the one that you're going to put in numget. It's the same address. And the different offsets of that address are going to give you different values. That's what is going on. So you are going to be able to understand how to put stuff and get stuff directly from memory. If you know I, that, I good, know. you're good. <laughs> no, but if you know how to do that, you're yeah. done. You're, you you so, know. <laughs> let me ask you one more thing, because I know with auto hotkey in general, 
it does its garbage collection basically uh, you know on its own it'll go through and when you close something it goes and frees up that memory if you use this do you have to go and clean it up or is auto hotkey still going to go free that up for you at least for this type of thing auto hotkey does it but okay. when you're dealing with dll calls you might need to do it yourself okay right so with this thing uh, as you're using an auto hotkey function that function is keeping track of many stuff and once you close auto hotkey, it goes away. But as soon as you open up the gates with the DLL call and you're actually accessing memory directly or doing stuff with libraries that access memory directly, then you have to keep in mind that you have to free that memory. If not, you have a memory leak and uh, later on in your code, uh, the computer is going to get slower and blah, blah, blah. And you will have to restart the computer and those kind of things. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. for No problem. Okay. Uh, what we can try to to get uh, the rectangle function working. So um, here we have the get win rectangle function. So I think it, it's to retrieve the uh, the coordinates and the the height of uh, of a window. Oh, look at that! It, it returns a rectangle variable, the one that we're looking at right now. So this one actually comes in the form of the structure that we were discussing a few seconds ago. It's the same. This function returns that to you. So we, we first paste it in the DLL, DLL call, call terminator. terminator. Yeah. Now notice that the second variable here is an out. So that second variable that you put in there is going to receive the information. You Can you first... highlight it? Just I was looking down below, but just so people see it. Right, down here. It says ah, out. This one. Yeah. The one that says out, that one. Um, so the first parameter is an in that you're going to give it a window handle and the out is going to give you the size of that uh, window. By, and, and actually, if you're using auto hotkey and you say get, uh, window get size, yeah, have you seen that command? Window get, win get. Yeah. If you're using that command, it's highly likely that it is using this function somehow, you know, in, uh, behind the scenes. But that's how it works. Okay, so we. It, it also code. reminds me of a, a a by reference, you know, in a function, that in, in that in that you know you're getting something back, but it's it's not you don't set it to equal to the way we normally do with auto hotkey. You know no, I mean? exactly. Because um, it's, it's exactly it's a while to get used to that and, and going. Oh, I'm storing <laughs> the value, you know, here. I'm updating it. I guess is a better way to say it. But yeah. I think if you leave it blank, it will take the the the. No, just take a. It. Or no, just leave it blank to get the the handle of this script. Yeah. Just put hwnd there. So when exist should normally uh... grab the handle of the current window, and all scripts have a hidden window. The main script has a hidden window, and you would get the handle to it and pass it back in here. Um, we set the capacity for the LPT, LP rec, and we already know what that would be. So we should put there a 16, because that's what we, what we saw on the previous example, right? So usually, I don't know why it didn't give it. I'm not, yeah, so this is the same. This is what we're getting at. So it's going to be 16 as well. But it's, yeah, that's LP maybe. It's a LP rec. Is that is the same? That's what I meant. So usually, even in different functions, they refer to it as a. It has a different name, but you're referring to this same structure. It's the same. Now this one is long pointer because you're given. Notice that here you're passing an address, right? Because it is you're not passing just the variable. You're passing the address of that variable, and that's what it is. A pointer. A pointer is the address for a variable. So what this function is expecting is not simply a rectangle, it is a pointer to a rectangle. That's what it's looking for. So that's why we're passing the address here. Now, in this case, everything looks good. We have the correct size, we get the window rectangle. If you run that, I would assume that you have to comment out the other code. Um, and then you just Remember that um, we could 
get use the num get okay you can use the function num get and use the offsets to get the different variables so if you put lp rect yeah but we will be lazy and just use <laughs> yeah exactly you can do that yeah yeah, yeah you can do that what the they same. gave us because uh... right so now you can remove the num put here all of that you can remove yeah. it and this num get as well you can go yeah. Ah, here we we also get the uh... yeah but that was for putting it so yes, yes, from... but it's interesting that the the structure also gives you the correct uh, size yes, that you need to exactly, have. exactly. Now, this rect, you have to change it for the LP rect, exactly, because now we're referring to that. And that should give us a specific size. In this, in this case, the size might be zero because the window is hidden. Um... um So maybe you should set up a GUI before doing the WinExist. Just do a GUI with a size 300 by 300 yeah, so that you can get a specific. We, we can also use this window, no? Why yeah, don't however you want. Need a, a GUI? Oh, no, no. However you want. That's OK. <laughs> no, we get 0, 0. That's correct, Because the window because... is hidden. Because you yeah. haven't actually set the window here. You have to set the window yeah. title to no, I think he, he will take this window. No, no, no. If you do not put any parameters, it would get the window, I think the hidden window from the script. Yeah. Now the active, just put the A in there, for, for example, an A, and it would give you the active window. Yeah. Yeah, I just use the Visual Let's try Studio. That. There you go. Now you get a different size. That's the left and the top sizes. But if you get the and other ones, like the right and button, it should give you more information. Yeah, yeah. It changes, yes. So basically, yes, this is the idea behind, and even though it looks foreign at the beginning, DLL calls allow you to access to certain functions. Um, and if you need to access information straight from memory, you can use numget as we are shown. Now, the problem is that getting the right numbers, right sizes might be really confusing and complex. These two scripts get you halfway there <laughs> and give you at least the basic code, because I can tell you sometimes it might be more complex than this. We were trying what with setting up the, the mouse icons. There's a few yeah. more things that you might need to do because dealing with the API is not as simple as just calling the functions. There's a lot of things going on that might that you need a little bit more understanding of what is going on but these two functions uh greatly speed up your coding time if you're actually accessing the api because you don't have to figure out anything just put that thing and it just gives you back out of hotkey code back to you that's it yeah also i see as uh, i noticed that sometimes these parameters uh can be sometimes as int and some they use uint but Sometimes they accept both of them. Yes. So, yeah, uh, again, this has, this is one of the complex things about dealing with uh, DLL calls and structures because the sizes may vary, okay, depending on the type of computer, the type of architecture that you're using and other different stuff. And I actually think we have an example there for a structure. So if you open the, the structure, right. So if you open the structure script first before grabbing that code, so just open the, the script itself first. Now notice that here, the 32 bits, 32 bits and 64 bits are the same in this case. The reason for that is that the type of variable long is the same in this particular case. But if you go ahead and copy the text from the other structure, you might find that there might be some different uh, differences in the offset when you're doing the num get and num put. In this case, a D word in particular might give you 12. The offset is 12 in 32 bits, but in 64 bits is double that. So now that 
if you try to access the wrong, uh, the wrong, uh, how do I say, uh, location in memory, you might make the programming unstable. You might crash Windows because you're accessing memory that you shouldn't be able to access. And basically, AutoHotKey has a way of preventing that. If you try to access memory outside of the range that the AutoHotKey script can access, it would actually usually throw uh, an error and close the script. It says like the script is going to get in unstable now and it will crash. Like it, it really tells you that. I've done that by mistake several times. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, this you have to this is this is the tricky part the code that is given back actually takes that into consideration somehow okay so he sets a variable that checks for your pointer first and then it just says like if it is x64 give me 24 if it isn't give me 12 so it is just very simple there and um but it has to do that and when you try to get the information you actually have to also make sure that you're getting the right thing. If it is 64 bit, the the offset is a little bit differently than um, than a normal 32 bit computer. Is, do you do you ever run anything? To, I mean, I, I wouldn't imagine so. But with the encoding that you're using, does that change anything? Yes, it changes a lot. Oh, yes, okay. because when you go ahead and put a string in a memory in memory, right? The, here we have an offset, right? And the reason for this is that we know that a byte or you know a D word has that size maximum, yeah. nothing more than that. But a string can be the word text, but it can be a paragraph. So the size is variable, right? So now the way how we know that we finished a string is what is called a null terminator. You have a string, yeah, it has a Let's string. Know, that's the author, his name. I don't know. <laughs> it's Noel, right? <laughs> no, but basically, yeah, I know him. Uh, but but uh, the string goes as long as it goes, and then it has a null character. It is not a zero. It is not blank. It's a very special character that tells the memory, here ends code, right? Now, and what happens is, as there's different encodings, the right. size of the string in memory might switch because for sure. UTF or ANSI is just one byte for each character, but for UTF-8 and UTF-16, for example, it might be two characters for right. one byte. So that makes you that your memory is not going to be the same if you store an ANSI string or a, a white character string. There is a difference between them. Cool. Yeah, that's all. Obviously, a very good thing to keep in mind when you're doing this as well. <laughs> Again, this is the part that it gets a little bit tricky, but you mainly do not need to use that unless you're accessing very advanced Windows stuff. But sometimes you might run into this. Examples on this on the internet or scripts that people share that have this kind of stuff on it, then you might want to edit it a little bit. Well, this might help you out. Um, getting there or understanding what they're actually doing, right? Because you can just go ahead and copy the the, the structure declaration and you would see what the heck is going on. Awesome. Actually, I find it kind of strange that they always use this code. I would write it more like, wait, like uh, a PTR size. Right. And then yeah. multiply it by... For example, for the first one, it would be eight, I think. No, four for eight. Yeah, so first of all, the thing is that on each of uh, those, no, you no. would... Right, I, I understand what you're trying to do, but um, that would be a question mark. If a pointer size is equal to four, multiply it by eight, well, by... Ah, yeah, then right by 24. The code is, is a right. little bit longer. Yeah. Right, that's the problem. That's what he did. He, he just added it once here so that he, he didn't have to put all that code down there. So, yeah, exactly. Kind of like that, yeah. So he just made it once into a variable. And now instead of having to write this whole thing, 
It just has x64 in there. That's it. It's a little bit easier. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything else that we want to cover in this? I think that should be all. <laughs> I think, no, I think that covers. Uh... <laughs> so I hope no, that no, helps. But... You know, it, it definitely. Thank you, Dimitri, for bringing it up and and you know helping us move through it. Because yeah, I, like I so stepping back again, auto hockey is an amazing language on its own. But there's some things you can't do. And actually, I was thinking of it as, as ASU and I talked a lot about this. Let, let's stick with like FFmpeg, right? Mm -hmm. FFmpeg is an amazing tool, command line, you know, thing that you can do a lot of stuff with. We're building GUIs that allow you to do some functionality of it, but not we're not adding everything in the world to it, right? Because it would be in an insane GUI. Well, AutoHotKey is kind of the same concept, right? It, it does a lot of the Windows API stuff that you can do, but it doesn't do everything that's available. Right. And this, no, is, exactly. this is one of the ways that you can start doing some of the other things that if, hey, if, if you think it's quote unquote limited, right, you know what, there's, you know, the DLL calls, there's calm, there's send and post messages. There's many ways that you can still do stuff with. Yeah. And, and, and here, here, here's how I put it. Here's how I put it. You usually want to make a specialized tool, right? That's what our hot key is it's a specialized tool to create hotkeys, hot strings, and automate stuff, right? That's the specialty. Mm -hmm. But it leaves you the door open that if you want to do more complex stuff, you still can do it with com objects and the oil call. That's what happens. Okay. Um, awesome. Well, thank you guys. This was really interesting. Hope everyone well, enjoys it. Chime in here, you guys. <laughs> on the video if you know you found it helpful and if you want to have more if you want to, what was the other one we talked about we were not going to cover today um, <laughs> yeah it was about uh, accessing the memory directly with num oh, okay. num put oh, and num yeah. get like if you're a hacker you, yeah you, you might want to do and we covered a little bit of it right now but you know <laughs> that's a different thing <laughs> there you go well thanks everyone bye bye bye